In this section, we'll be exploring the powerful MapReduce capability of MongoDB. We'll begin with an overview of what MapReduce is and how we can use it. We'll then go through the creation of a map and reduce function one at a time. Next, we'll explore some advanced MapReduce techniques before moving on to a discussion of when to use MapReduce. This first video provides an overview of MapReduce. Creating effective MapReduce algorithms requires a solid understanding of the data. The desired end result needs to be defined, and any questions or modifications to existing data should be identified. We'll need a more diverse set of data in order to complete this section. We can import this data, just as we have in previous videos. First, we populate a bulk import data file on the server. We place the bulk import data file on the server and call Mongo to import the data. We can then log into Mongo and use Course Tracker and confirm that the collections are available. In keeping with our focus on students in previous sections, we'll be extending the Course Tracker example by adding instructor and course documents. We will also be introducing the idea of document references. You can see that an instructor document will reference courses and that course documents will reference students. Proper understanding of relationships is critical when designing MapReduce algorithms. You may have noticed that our sample data specifies ID values. This is for convenience in referencing so that we don't have to identify automatically generated object IDs. From the Mongo command line, we can query for an instructor document. Notice that the ID is not an object ID, as was already mentioned. We see that there is a courses array which contains references to the ID values found in the course documents. When we query for a course document, we see that there is a students array which contains references to the ID values from documents in the student collection. Finally, we can query for a student document and see that there are no backward references to course or instructor. All references go in one direction. As we learned in section 2, the documents have been normalized only far enough to prevent significant duplication of data. Now that we understand what the data looks like, let's do a very basic map reduce to find the number of courses for which each student has signed up. All the data we need is in the courses collection, but it's distributed among all documents. What we want to do is take the data from the student's array and reorganize it to be sorted by student ID and represent a sum totaling the number of times the student ID appears in any course. In the Mongo shell, we want to create the map function. The keyword this refers to a single course document. So this.students is the array of student ID values. This function loops over those student ID values and emits the value of 1 with a student ID as the key. If this isn't perfectly clear right now, don't worry. We're going to go over this in more detail in the next video. The reduce function catches emitted values by key. It's important to understand that it doesn't catch them one at a time as they are emitted. The reduce function is not called until all emit calls have been made. In this case, we would expect the key coming in to match one of the student ID values. The values variable will be an array containing all the values that were emitted for the given key. In this simple case, these will all be ones because that's all we emit. This function then loops over that array and obtains a sum. When the reduce function returns that sum, the return value is associated with the key that passed in the array of values. We can run the MapReduce by identifying the DB, collection, and calling MapReduce. This function expects references to the map function, the reduce function, and information about what to do with the result of the MapReduce operation. In this case, we overwrite or create a collection number courses. After we run the MapReduce, we can show collections and see the new collection. When we do a find on that collection, we see the student ID values along with the total number of courses corresponding to each. After we run the MapReduce, various results about what the MapReduce did are displayed. We can also show collections and see the new collection, number courses. When we do a find on that collection, 
we see the student ID values along with the total number of courses corresponding to each. As we review the diagram again, in this diagram we see that what we did is for each course document we looped through all student ID values. Each student ID value was admitted as a key with a value of 1. All of these emitted values were later collected into an array which was passed to the reduce function to calculate the sum. In this video we learned how important it is to understand the structure of existing data in order to create map reduce functions. We also discovered that it's important to know ahead of time what the end result should look like and any calculations required to achieve it. In the next video we'll look more closely at creating map functions.